Um, this will be the workshop report on time use and travel with the chair being Professor Chandra Bhatt. Okay, so basically at the beginning of the workshop, he basically said that the objective would be to identify the gaps in the research and translate these gaps into tangible research statements. And the outcome obviously would be a comprehensive research problem statements for each of the different um, subheadings. So he did give us some key research areas that we were supposed to look at. That would be ICT and new challenges in time use analysis, interactions among individuals, specific and seasonal segments, and broader philosophical issues, theory-driven and data-driven. So on the first day of the workshop, it was just a general discussion with everyone and we touched on all four of these topics. And then on day two, what we did was we had some breakaway groups where each group took a topic and we developed some motivation and research areas that we wanted to look at. So in this presentation, we'll be discussing all four areas. So the first area, ICT and new challenges in time use analysis. One day versus multi-day, rethinking time use data. So basically, travel behavior researchers have been debating for a very long time the usefulness of a multi-day data set versus a single day data set. With the development of technology, is, when the, while the development of technology is changing, our time use patterns and how we schedule our days and weeks are changing as well. We have more spontaneous and irregular behavior from persons that are not in their typical schedule. So this leads to questions, whether ex ante scheduling happens at all for certain activities. So the motivation for this segment is the, admit, the advent of new technologies is reshaping transportation systems and people's lives. Gaining a better understanding of time use and well-being would be better for health and environmental outcomes. So the research areas would be, do we really need multi-day data to model time use? Is single day data enough? And if it isn't, what then now would be the, what would we now use instead of single day or multi day data? There's a need to elaborate methods to collect observational data on multitasking as well as adequate modeling techniques. Incorporation of time spent in ICT alongside other traditional activities and model this so to understand how these activities interact in terms of scheduling and time allocation. Measuring the heterogeneity of the change of time use with the advance of technology, especially in terms of recovery time, thanks to ICT. And developing more accurate measures for well-being from different activities in the transportation literature. So this is just a picture of our focus group hard at work. And the next topic is going to be specific and seasonal segments. <clears throat> so in this sort of uh, subgroup, we were looking at how to sort of segment the population to look at time use as well as sort of what seasonal uh, variation or segmentation might be necessary or would be helpful. Um, so seasonality, we're looking at sort of both how weather affects schedules but, uh, or, and uh, the impact on travel behavior of individuals. Um, one of the topics that came up was looking at seasonal or special event behavior. So looking at, for example, college towns where the traffic volumes vary by the time of the year and whether it's um, worthwhile or necessary, um, what the usefulness would be of um, examining uh, uh, additional, t looking at how uh, uh, traffic volumes uh, and travel patterns vary over the year in a little more detail, rather than just sort of considering what th the standard and current uh, transportation models of sort of a, a typical day in the fall. Um, one of the uh, other major topics that came up for us in this regard is looking at sort of Cohorts, there's been quite a bit of research done on sort of millennial travel patterns and how they've evolved over time. Um, but we sort of wonder if this maybe um, has focused on perhaps the wrong area, where if you look at the literature, you find that, you know, early literature suggests that millennials were choosing not to live 
in homes, you know, they're choosing to live kind of closer in to the urban area, and then more recent research has sort of disputed that perhaps, and some of the challenges that arise from how cohorts develop over time and perhaps their behavior changes and then sort of comparing a study on millennials from 2000 to one done in 2010, you're not exactly comparing apples to apples. Um, so just some of the issues that arise from looking at things in, in that way. Um, so the motivations, we have our special generators and seasonal behavior are important factors in examining time use and should these be included in activity-based models. Um, some of the research areas we were looking at is how can we leverage new data sources to examine seasonal effects outside of um, travel survey collection periods. The second question that arose for us is cohort the correct, cohort sort of the correct framing or the mechanism that we should be using for looking at time patterns um, segmented by, po the, by population group. Um, is it perhaps uh, better to look at a separation, um, sorry, the, the first point's going back to what I discussed in the previous one. Is it perhaps better to look at um, similarities by lifestyle or life stage? So do, within the millennial generation, do people who are 20 or 30 but single have more similarities in their travel patterns than uh, a, a person who's 20 but perhaps married? And then some of the challenges and how do we disentangle some of these effects? So how do we disentangle sort of generational effects from life stage effects um, and what data is necessary to assist in this analysis? And this is our group enjoying the nice weather. Um, and now, yeah. So the next area we're looking at would be interactions among individuals. And basically, human beings as social animals will always seek social interactions which support their activities. There has been fundamental changes in the family structure brought about by aging populations, more single-person households, and increased workforce participation of women. Now, the use of technology and the rise of social media have been incredible sources for information and shapers of attitudes. So the motivation for this segment was in this changing environment, we need to examine our analysis tools and methodologies and map out a research agenda that provides us with an understanding of the impact of changes in the structure and relationships within our society. So these research areas are going to be a stronger conceptual framework that enhances our understanding of the effects of social interactions and the access to the type of data which allows us to map the communications and interactions which result in the observed travel behaviors. This includes um, things like WhatsApp and Facebook messaging. Again, this is our focus group hard at work. And the next topic would be broader philosophical issues. All right, the final focus group, uh, final group we, we discussed was very interesting topic, more philosophical, more higher level on uh, on what should our inferences be ultimately based? Is it uh, the theory driven or, or and or is, uh, is, it, is it and should be uh, data driven? Um, well, at the start of it, we uh, came to a common understanding that the purpose of time use and behavior research is to understand first and predict and inform the decisions of stakeholders. However, uh, as we all know, data availability and analysis is changing. And this provides new tools in our toolbox. And um, so the primary use of data probably still says, uh, in the, in the, and it is to better validate our theories. Uh, for example, we can use more advanced data to uh, impute information that is currently missing, or to provide better proxies for unobservable variables. Think of uh, facial expressions as uh, proxies for emotions, for example. However, uh, uh, these new data also provide a new possibility and it can inspire new theories. And specifically, since our uh, research in time use has primarily been based on microeconomic uh, frameworks, uh, it allows to integrate um, insights and uh, tools from other fields which have uh, benefited and flourished from the 
availability of uh, new data, which are, for example, cognitive sciences and experimental economics, computer sciences. Um, but we also came to uh, an understanding that um, the goal of uh, both fields uh, is to arrive at better predictions. However, uh, it should not be only predictions mindlessly not caring what is be, uh, below those predictions, but they should be, uh, the better predictions should be driven by better understanding. And actually in this moment, uh, the group of Pro Professor Bilal Farouk uh, joined us on data mining and travel, and uh, they will uh, definitely share more insights into research areas. So, um, but in, in general level, we came to uh, uh, understanding that we need more cooperation more interdisciplinary approaches, and also unified terminology. There was, at some points, uh, some discussion that what it actually means theory or hypothesis in both fields, or uh, is actually what we, we mean by integrated choice latent variable model, the same as some simplified machine learning uh, models and such uh, discussions. So that clear, clearly indicates the need to unify uh, our discussions. And um, so uh, an example of research area could be to uh, how, how could we possibly, if possible, really uh, interpret the machine learning models. And uh, I think Professor uh, Bart said that uh, it's, it, we could peel it like an onion open to see what's, what's inside the black box. Um, but uh, you will definitely hear more of these research areas in the following presentation. And this is our group uh, at work. Uh, and finally, um, uh, we did an interesting uh, survey. So actually, we are really trying to understand time use of other people, but can we understand our own time use? So uh, there, there was a question proposed by, by Professor Bart. How would you sp spend two additional three hours in your day? And we answered among ourselves, about 20 people, so this is really not representative. But... Um, so the answers were mostly sleeping. We are probably towards the end of the conference. And, um, but also a work, yeah, we are hardworking, and go to gym and quality time with family. That's, that's where the answers. And I actually invite you to also reflect on that. We uh, aim to study behavior of others, but can we understand and uh, formulate the rules underlying our own behavior? So, thank you. <laughs>